All right, here we go. Today we have the first rapper to have a number one song on Billboard, who had the fastest selling hip hop album ever at that time, and still has one of the biggest hip hop albums of all time with over hundreds of millions of records sold worldwide. The artist who played a major role in popularizing hip hop to the rest of the world, when it was primarily with an American audience. The man who unintentionally funded Death Row Records with artists like Snoop Dogg. The man who after his massive hip hop run, made power moves in real estate and continues to thrive financially. It is my honor to sit down with the one and only Vanilla Ice. What a hell of an introduction. <laughs> you like that? I love it, you man. You love it? Did you ride it on the airplane? <laughs> wrote it this morning. I love it. Wrote it this morning after a lot of research. Well, look, you don't have a lot of time today, so I want to get yeah. right into it. Come on in. So your biggest song, Ice Ice Baby, you wrote that at 16 years old. Debatable. Debatable. Yeah. And I know you're probably going, what? Ninja rap is strong contender okay. right now the youth your age it's ice ice baby college kids 25 and under it's ninja rap okay <laughs> they're aware of ice ice baby but trust me people buying records today ninja rap is crazy okay so you're living in dallas you're a breakdance kid yeah and you start perform on stage yeah and things started to take off and your manager at the time tommy kwan who's still your manager by the way yeah. saw some potential in you and had you start going to the studio and start recording now, here's where things get a little bit fuzzy. Now, I watched a few of your interviews, and you said you wrote the song yourself, you produced it yourself, but a guy popped up named Mario Chocolate Johnson. <laughs> now, he claimed he was living in Dallas at the time. He said that he wrote a diss record against you, and then Quan approached him to work with you. He was also partnered with DJ Earthquake, and he said that he wrote nine songs. That was songs. a lie, first of all, so right that's a there. Lie. Oh, there's a lot of lies in there, man. Okay. This guy's just probably bitter because we were running this. Remember, I told you DOC was in there with me. Yep. I had Dr. Rock, the Feel a Fresh crew, um, so many, you know, big hip hop groups to me at the time locally. We were all running the same streets and everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I barely knew this guy, Mario. And to hear all this shit come out, you know, 30 years later is like a shock to me. It's like, what are you sitting at home twiddling your thumbs, figuring out what to say or do? Everybody knows that this came through Suge Knight. Everybody knows, man. Right. The story has been out there for 30 years. He didn't hang me over no balcony. Now, I know, and we'll get to that part of the story. But he took publishing. And yes. the publishing and the way he took it was through this guy, Mario. Got it. And I want, I want to get to that part of the story in a second. Okay. So regardless of how it came together, you put together the song, and you guys originally signed to Ichiban Records. Well, you got distributed through Ichiban. You say you guys. I'm a solo artist. Well, me, I was you, only your manager. When I wrote Ice Ice team. Baby, I know you can research Vlad and ever get all kind of mixed stories out there. And and when you want to know the truth, just ask me. Okay. Because so many people fluff things up, like he hung over the balcony. I never was hung over a balcony. There's so many things, Vlad. Just ask me the question. Okay. Well, the song came together, and you signed a distribution deal with Ichiban, right? The original name of the album was Hooked. Correct. Okay. You guys put it out. And Ice Ice Baby was the B side. Play That Funky Music White Boy was the A side. Yeah. Which didn't really take off. But then when it got sent out, DJ Daryl, uh, Daryl J in Georgia, yeah. started to play it. I think it was Macon. Macon, uh -huh. Macon Georgia. And they started South. to play it and it started to take off. Yeah. You guys shot a music video. And then SBK came in and signed you. Yeah. For 325000 there's a little bit you're missing there, but yeah. Okay. You want to okay. know what's missing? What's missing? Def Jam Records. Well, they wanted to sign you, but didn't. They had me signed, had the contract in hand. Really? I, they paid for my plane flight to come to New York City. Okay. That's where I was going is was literally that day before SBK even became a thing, before it even was brought to my attention. Didn't Never heard of SBK before. Okay. I was on my way on the plane flight, landed in New York with contract to sign with Def Jam. And this was through Public Enemy. Right. Hank Shockley. Yay. Right. Yeah. Shout out to, shout out to yes. Chuck shout C. Out. That's my man. Yeah. Shout out to Flavor Chuck. Flav, All who's day. been on my show. Legends. Okay. But you ended up signing with SBK, which was part of EMI at the time? Yes. Okay. So they repackaged. No, I got a phone call from Tommy and he says, listen, I'm going to give you, uh, I think it was 7 million reasons why you're not going to sign right now. And you're not going to sign for like less than a million for Def Jam. And he says, and I said, well, Tommy, I guess I'm not signing then. 
because at first I said, fuck you. I'm, I'm not doing shit. I'm signing with Def Jam. This that is, was the biggest hip hop label. Bro, period. this was my yeah. dream come true all the way smiling ear to ear on the way to my first trip to New York ever to oh. sign a contract with Def Jam. Yeah. I think I was 17 or 18 at the time. Oh my God, this was a dream come true. And I, get, I land and Tommy gets on the phone and says, we're not signing. Fuck you. Yo, I give you 7 million reasons why. I said, well, I guess I'm not signing. Why? He goes, SBK. Hey, what the hell does that mean? This guy named Charles Koppelman I met. I said, okay. Well, what's that mean? Just wait for me. I'm on my way to New York. And that's where it all started. That's where you're picking up from.